How are you? We are live on Instagram and on YouTube. Happy holidays. How are you, everybody? How is everybody doing tonight? Uh, we are live. Sorry for a delay. Just had a few, a little bit of harangues on the technical side, but I've got things sorted out and we're ready to go here, both on IG and YouTube. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Plus, I was at the gym today. Got a little run. Got my little uh, four to five mile run. Just had to get the... Yes, carcinogens out, all the turkey out, all the tryptophan out. Now we're back, and we're in with a shout. Yes, as I turn on my mic, yes, indeed. Oh, yes, I forgot about the turn on my mic. Just one second. Oh, my God. I didn't turn on my mics, people. Where the hell have I been? Where are my mics, people? There we go. Mic's on to the break of dawn. Let's do this. Here we go. And if it complies, there we go. We are back. Sorry about that. Yes, we had to turn on the mics. Mics are on, and we are available. We build it as we fly it, as the man KS would say. R.I.P. to the Godfather. Yes, we are back, and we are live. We are talking today about the uh, brouhaha, the uh, the uh, internet bun down that was uh, the Britney Renner, just probably things, and Andrew Tate shindig that was uh, happening last week. If you don't know now, you know. If if you if listen, if you're into uh, Manosphere, if you're into uh, Red Pill, if you're into anything as such, you 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 could not throw a rock without hitting uh, any sort of chat about this uh, thing that uh, about this conversation that happened, the three-hour conversation that happened on Christmas Day. Well, it was filmed earlier, but it was actually uh, it was uploaded on Christmas Day, and it was a doozy. It was a barn burner. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We are on the road to a thousand subscribers. Actually, I'm getting a few subscribers as we speak this week, which is great. Thank you very much for that. That must have been a Christmas gift. As for my Christmas, my Christmas was fantastic. Can't can't complain. I've got my, I I got a fragrance haul. If you didn't know me, if you know me, I am a frag head big time, and I got myself a load of fragrances that I can call my own, and uh, I'll I'll debut them soon. You know what? I want to start a uh, 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 you know a fragrance channel. Uh, they seem to be big these days. I want to start a fragrance channel, but I want to get a a collection up that is, you know, that is large enough that I can literally, you know, uh, bun down the place with my scents. So I, I, I want to get like, you know, a minimum, a, a good sum. I would say a good sum about about a minimum 100 cents around there. So that's what I would like to do and I will do in due course. But right now I am uh, building up that. So. I don't want to be an aficionado without having at least a repertoire of scents to bring to you. And that will happen in the near future, uh, hopefully this year. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, comment, uh, donate. Uh, super thanks. Do what you can just to help uh, the channel grow. And uh, we are growing. We are, or we are, we are doing our thing. And I got a, and I got a, uh, a uh, uh, shout out from uh, Golden Arm. Golden Arm <laughs> gave me a shout out this week. Want to do a little collab. So we're going to think about doing something in the new year. So again, uh, do look out for that. And thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, and comment. So let's get into this. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I, I thought, it, I, well, this is going to be a great night because I thought the uh, the interview between Brittany Renner, Pearly Things, her guests, at, and uh, and the the great Andrew Tate. Uh, was in, in last week and he was on fire people he was on fire he was he was he was lighting flames among uh among the feminists he was lighting uh, uh flames among the modern women and quite simply it's uh again uh from uh from all accounts just pearly things said it was uh, over a million views already on that uh, on that broadcast and that was broadcast on christmas day so only uh, only a, already a million views after only a couple of days and uh you know that that means the tape, uh, the the tape moderns, as I call them, uh, were in full effect and they were fully supporting their man, and and so they should. He was in fine form on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, yes indeed. So, but it was filmed earlier, of course. But anyways, we're gonna get into it. And what I wanted this one to be today, what uh, 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 this this uh, this live today was all about how Andrew Tate. Um, how he basically took down uh, feminist ideas. He was he was just uh, setting them up and knocking them down, despite it all. And uh, I thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Hello, Narissa. How are you? Thank you for joining me. And Merry Christmas. I will be sending out something to you very soon. 
And uh, yeah, I haven't even got to my cards yet. I usually, I'm usually very good at like handing out cards and greetings and such. And I haven't even done that because I've been so busy um, with uh, with other things and uh, you know and a, a bit of bad news. But I won't I won't reveal that uh, right now. It's more of a family issue. Uh, you know, I'm praying for one of my family members who's going through it right now. And uh, and again, um, yeah, he's uh, I think my clo uh, one of my closer cl cousins. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, you know hoping that he is all right. But anyways, uh, sorry to bring that <laughs> bring it down a notch right there. But we're gonna pick it back up again, and we're gonna talk about this interview with Andy Tate and just probably things and Brittany Renner. So we're gonna start out. Let me get into my browser here, and we're gonna get into this. Yes, indeed. So Andy Tate um, was talking all things uh, Manosphere, all things Red Pill, all things dating relationships, all things uh, all, all things feminism and all things modern woman on Christmas Day. And it was a fantastic event. But I wanted to focus in on how he took down and how he schooled feminism on this day. And, uh, you know, you know, they're throwing, you know, uh, feminist ideas left, right, and center to a point where now they demonetize, and I don't get this, they demonetized because I just got a, 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 a um, uh, I, I just uh, was saw a post from Pearly Things today, and they demonetized the show today, which goes to show that you know they don't want uh, strong men out there, they don't want uh, masculine ideas out there. If anything threatens feminism and and and, and the women's movement, they're automatically going to demonetize it, as they have the, have done with Andrew Tate, and uh, they don't even know his message. I think his message is fair, and I think his message is clear, but nobody wants to listen to it because again, it goes against women. So. We're going to go into that right now. We're going to go into this uh, this this broadcast here. Uh, and I'm going to take it up at around the 10th minute. And uh, basically, we're going to start out because I already have a list. Let me just get that up here, up for myself. Here we go. And uh, and basically, we're going to start out with the first uh, f uh, with the first issue. And that is involving um, and uh, how Andrew Tate took feminists to school. And the first issue started with how male status favors traditional roles over sexual liberation. Now, again, uh, in, in this day and age, a body count, uh, <laughs> according to feminists, according to the women's women uh, movement, body count should not matter to men. And, uh, you know, and uh, traditional roles should be thwarted in, uh, in, in essence, uh, in order to, uh, uh, you know, to gain uh, traction for equality and uh, basically, you know, equal rights among men and women. Uh, but I, I would say they're more or less takeover rights for women. And, you know, Andrew Tate sets them straight, quite simply. And he literally tells them that, no, uh, men did not sign up for this and nor will we ever sign up for it. And he basically shuts down, uh, uh, shuts down such ideas and uh, and he basically states how male uh, male status favors traditional roles over li uh, sexual liberation. So we're going to get into that in these first couple of minutes, and I'm going to be commenting along the way. So listen out for that as we go into this. And uh, yeah, it's, it should be, I mean, the first, I, I was just going to play the first couple minutes, and then we're going to discuss as we go along. All right, here we go. Let me say this, Auntie, <laughs> Auntie Jenny was in fine form, fine form on, on, on Christmas Day. Had just, per, uh, uh, has just pearly things in stitches, had Andrew Tate in stitches, had everybody in the studio, and all feminists were on red alert. She was not taking shit, she was not, she was not, and she was not taking no guff from no one. And she was setting him straight, he was literally setting him straight, so, and she was, and she said here, Nobody signed up for BBLs. Nobody signed up for lip injections. This is for lady, ladies thinking that this is what men want. They never asked men what men want. They never asked what men want. To a certain extent, BBLs were uh, what men, uh, what black men like, but they took it up to, you know, circus-like proportions, <laughs> quite simply. Uh, but again, she said them straight that, you know, a lot of these cosmetic surgery, men didn't want. They literally didn't want. 
It's just that women think that that's a way to get ahead. But at the end of the day, traditional, traditional values are what get women ahead from everything, as will be proven throughout this broadcast. Thank you for joining me in Talk to Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Help me through it. Help me to it. Again, let's move it on. Sorry about that. Hold on. Renner, the certified hoe, the porn, the the, the 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 porn star level girl, decides that having cooking skills, a cookie for your man, is outdated. Who told us that? Who told her that? Who told her that? That'll never go out of style with men. Never, ever, ever go out of style with men. Let me say that again. Set up for the cheap seats. Cooking skills from a woman to her man will never go out of style. In fact, that's the cheat. That, that's one of the cheat codes. If you can cook for your man, if you can cook for your children, chances are you'll be a wife. Lo and behold, she can probably hardly boil an egg. Uh, uh, so you know she's gonna go on those credences. Ridiculous. But anyways, you know she thought she could uh, uh, shag her way to the top, but didn't necessarily happen, did it? Anyways, you move on. I'm saying, it's like, you're, we have literally just talked about this off camera when, we, when you guys came here from the airport. When we were talking about, oh, what are, what's the value system or the point system for a woman who cooks versus a, a woman who can suck good dick and fuck well. But you can like, cook and suck dick as well. Again, people, remember what Brittany Redder stands for. She said, she thought that she can shag her way to the top. She thought that she can, that her pee would get her anywhere and everywhere. Lo and behold, that wasn't the case. There's a reason why porn stars are considered porn stars. You know that, right? You know, there's a reason that why hoes are, are, have a special designation. And if you're a known hoe, there's a special, special designation for it. I just read today, Amber Rose can't find a man these days. She's supposed to be one of the finest on the block. However, her whole card was exposed. We read the whole facts. Nobody wants to be associated with her outside of sex, outside of a good time girl, outside of a bit of fun. Same thing with Brittany Renner. However, she will insist till the day she dies that her pee is made of gold and frankincense and should be revered and held above a woman who can cater to her man outside the bedroom. But Andrew Tate's about to set him straight. Here we go. see this you see this that's why she is so broken she forgot one of the key pieces and look look at andrew 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 let you look at andrew andrew's about to set him straight he's just sitting back it's like woman you done lost your mind if you thought that cooking skills are out, outdated you done lost it She's trying every which way to justify that P is better than C. That is cooking, cleaning, and catering to your man. P is greater than C. That's a, that, that, that must be an equation. An equation that Albert Einstein himself wouldn't have signed up for. No way. P will never come before C. Andrew's about to set it straight. Don't worry. You just told me about this yesterday. No, it was okay. I did a street interview and I asked the guys, would you rather have a girl that gave good head or a good cook? And most guys. They want this. Uh, but I think that's for the quick satisfaction. I think that's more for like a one night stand. But what I'm trying to say is that if you, all the women out there, and they're talking about, well, some of the women want to be settled down. They want a man. Right? And you've got to think what the man wants. The man, the man is interested in that. Look at, when you're, when you're doing street interviews, you're interviewing single people. 
Tell her, Andrew. Tell him. Tell him. Tell these hoes. argument has been disbanded. It has been destroyed in one fell swoop. A multi-millionaire man literally told her what men want, and that is higher status. And what's going to get you higher status with a man? Being able to cook for not only him, but his friends. Making him look good. Sex! Sexual favors does not make you look good in the eyes of men. It makes you look good behind closed doors with your man, yes. But in the eyes of other men, no. As he said, he'd rather have a virgin than a, than a, than a woman who clearly has sexual prowess. He'd rather have her than that. So if you can see her face right now, if you can see her face right now, and you can uh, address it on Talk Talk Live, it just shut her down. Her whole premise was shut down. Because she thought, and she's, and this is Brittany Renner I'm referring to here, she, and she still believed in even her friend in the corner, in the brown, who I, I forget her name, but she is totally obnoxious. I, I, I care not to know her name. I care not to. But her whole premise, her whole argument, <laughs> shut down in one fell swoop. In one fell swoop. Because Andrew Tate told these ladies what men have known all along. If you make us look good in front of our friends, if you make us look good in front of our partners, make us look good in front of our, biz, uh, in front of our boss, <laughs> that's all we need to know. And you can't look good in front of these people by sucking dick. By giving fellatio. You can't look good. No chance. That's the trick that Brittany Renner missed. Totally missed. And that's why she's in the position she's in now. Because she thought her P will get her everything she wanted. Not the case. She's a single mom, alone, can't cook, can't clean, can barely take care of herself, let alone her child. I assume this. Allegedly, allegedly, let me not get myself into any trouble here. Can't take care of her, of her children, and yet, and yet, still insists that the sexual way is the way. What? Anyways, she gets the character. Uh, she, 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 
She's got the cart before the horse and she wonders why she's in the position she's in. Maybe if she listened to man over time, was more selective, and we'll come to that, more selective in her choices, then she'd be further ahead. But this is what feminism has you think. That a woman shouldn't have to cook or clean or do traditional roles in order to get, to get ahead with men. Their money should be enough. Their pee should be enough. That should get you ahead. But again, ladies, I say again, men didn't sign up for that. Never did. We will never co-sign that. Never co-sign that deal. Unless you're a simp. My girl over here telling me, oh, well, that's why you have a cook for. How many people have cooks in their house? How many? Again, ladies, if you want to be selected by high, by high ranking, high value men, you need to have this in your repertoire. You need to have this in your holster. Being able to cook clean and cater to your men. Because if you don't, you'll end up like Brittany and soon to be uh, Br uh, Brown Gal over there. Unbelievable. Let's continue. Perfect. And you can see Brittany's face all through that. It's just clicked in. Oh, I've been doing it wrong. I've been doing it wrong all this time. Yeah, you've been doing it wrong all this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been doing it wrong all this time, and now you're in the predicament you're in. Because you didn't have the soft skills. You couldn't move the tiny pieces on the chessboard. Now you're here, and you're wondering, how did I get here? Brittany's wondering, how did I get here? My girl's not even taking notes in the brown here. She's just literally befuddled. She can't believe that's the truth. Oh, my God. Ladies, 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 ladies. If you want to know how to get to a man, ask a man. Don't ask these ladies. Don't ask them. They all think, oh, don't worry. The P will get you everything. No. No. The P won't get your wife. That's for damn sure. It won't. No, 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 no. So, just saying. You can do it. You can do it the Britney way. You're, you're well entitled to do that, but chances are you'll end up not getting what you wanted. Okay, she's just going on a few on a tangent. You'll and you'll find that that's Denalva, and you'll find that with Denalva, she goes on many tangents that <laughs> no man understands, no, no nor no man wants to, anyways. But she's entitled to her opinion. Let her have it. But uh, anyways, uh, she's a head shaker to say the least. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. Now we're going to go into the second subject that we're here to discuss uh, here to discuss tonight. Oh. Uh, First subject, if, if, just as a recap, male status favors traditional roles over sexual liberation. Yes. The P will not get you what you want. You'll get your guy a good, you'll, you'll get a guy having a good time, but it won't get you the man you want, which is what Brittany's struggling against now. Swimming against the tide, thinking that that formula works. No, never did. Never did. 
As Andrew Tate already pointed out, he'd rather have a virgin than a woman who was schooled in the sexual arts. Rather do that than anything. But again, Lazel still insists that all oh, sex is the end all be all. That's all men want. No. No, 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 no. That's what, it's, it's, what's in, it's what's beyond that that separates call girls, good time girls, a bit of fun, hoes, from wives. But we, we move on. We continue. Loyalty over, promis uh, over promiscuity is the next subject. And feminists will have you believe that women should be able to be given the grace of men in, in the sexual marketplace in terms of sexual equal uh, in terms of sexual equality in that a woman should be allowed to shag whomever and how many she wants in order and yet not be debased by the general public slash men they should be they should they they they're, they should have sexual experiences and be considered heroes and be considered, you know, and should be heralded the way men do, the way men are in, 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 in many uh, men's eyes. But that'll never be the case because we go in a different value system, as will be proven in our next subject. Thank you for joining me on Talk to Talk Live. Seasons greetings. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. If you are celebrating. And if not, happy holidays. We are going to move on to the next subject here. And I think it's, we're going to queue it up right now. There we go. Around here. Yes, I think so. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about loyalty over promiscuity and how se uh, feminist sexual equality will never be with men. Because again, we didn't sign up for it. So, and while and why we think loyalty is much is a much better thing to have than promiscuity of a woman. I love that answer from Andrew Tate. It's done for shock value, number one. But number two, it's done because biology allows him to say these things. Okay, of course, feminism and the women's movement and, and, and all things, you know, uh, She-Ra will never allow you to say that these days, not in public. But again, Andrew Tate's a guy that goes against the drain. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew takes the throwback. And if, he is, and if he's ever debated, is he ever defeated? No, he's not, because he's got his stuff together. I have not seen one debate, in which, and, and I've got to praise Andrew Tate for that. I've never seen one debate in which a feminist has defeated this man in an open debate. I have not seen it. Have not. Here again, he says, and he's about to prove that men over time have always been heralded for sexual exploits because it's to show how many resources he has and how successful he has been as a man. Simple as that. And it goes from time immemorial. From the time we, be, we were hunters and gatherers to modern day society. The more women you have as a man, the more sex you have as a man, the more successful you are as a man. It's always been the case. Women want to rewrite that now to a point where a woman's body count don't count. 
Sorry. Men never signed up for that. Never did. Women did, of course. Because they want to be, you know, they, they want to rid themselves of the stench and stigma of hoism. However, ladies, I'll say again and again. We never signed up for that. To my YouTube audience, never did, never signed up for that. And if you did, that's simpish behavior. That is uh, panda bear behavior, and you know it. Shame on you, men. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame on you. That you believe such drivel. Anyways, and is about to explain why this is indeed an ideal that has traversed throughout history and will continue to, uh, to, to, to be heralded in society and among manhood. Let's go. ovation the look on Brittany Renner's face after that soapbox moment is priceless absolutely priceless her whole life well her last eight years that is her whole last eight years were written off in one fell swoop one fell swoop In that one diatribe, he literally called her out for what she was. The ho! Because Brittany Renner's whole thing about her truth, about her ideals, about her everything, is that she should have the spoils of men. She should be able to behave like men and yet be heralded like men. And Andrew Tate said it right. Just said it. Never in the annals of history has that been the case. You cannot call out, outside of maybe Mar uh, Mary Magdalena. That's one. I'll give you that. Maybe Madonna number two. Anyways. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. In the annals of history, you have never heard a hoe to be 
a hero in the eyes of society. Never. That's what Britney's trying to change now. She says that her truth and her journey should be hung from the rafters like Kyle Lowry's jersey in the next couple years. For the Toronto Raptors, if you didn't know. It should be retired. Her panties should be retired. Her panties should be retired. Her <laughs> oral skills should be retired. She should be put in a Hall of Fame, people. A Hall of Fame. That's what Britney's trying to show here. And with every word, it's like Andrew's come out with a, with a knife and sliced those ideals to pieces. And how she looks here is typified of it. She's been relegated to the bin of society. The bin. The literal bin. Because she put not only what was she a whole by deeds. She actually wrote a book on it. Judge this cover is her book on it. She followed in the fine footsteps of Amber Stevens and Karen Stephens. She wrote a book on it. How her sexual skills should be heralded. And how she should be entitled. Entitled. Betrothed. A high value man. Gifted. A high value man for her services to society. In what earthly realm is that the case? In where, in what part of God's green earth is that been the case? And you can't, and you take set it straight. He asked them to name one, one woman. I just named one, Mary Magdalena. And even Jesus had to forgive her. Even Jesus had to forgive her for her hoish ways. She was about to be stoned to death, people. That's what the Bible says. She was about to be stoned to death for her promiscuity. And yet, Jesus took pity on her and asked us all, judge yet, lest ye be judged. He who is without sin, skin, sorry, skin? <laughs> he who is without sin, cast the first stone. And they couldn't. Now virtually, Stones have been casted against Brittany Renner. And she is asking society, hey, what about us hoes? We're heroes too. What? My truth, my experiences, my, they should be sung among women of all ages. What? Let me tell you this one thing, ladies. If you're going to get into a whole life, if you're going to be a city girl, if you're going to be a 304, keep it on the low. There are literal escorts who, as, as a way to get through college and pay bills, will, be, will cater to the sexual exploits of men, to the, to the carnal lust of man himself. But they can still be white, you know. The only thing is, those exploits must be kept quiet and discreet and undercover. Brittany's problem here is that she decided Mount Everest needs to know about this. And, 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 and thus the rest 
of the world because Mount Everest being the highest peak in the world. The world needs to know. And I should be considered a hero because I climbed Mount Everest of hoes. I climbed the Mount Everest of hoes and so I should be heralded the queen of hoes. And so I should be granted a crown and scepter. And walked down Westminster Abbey et al. On a bed of roses. Carried by rippling muscly men. With my end result being marriage to a high value man to whom I will select as part of my heavenly choices. I, 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 I don't get it. I really don't get it. I, I went on a little diatribe there. Yes, I know. But that's what she thinks. And her face right there just denigrates that whole ideal to ashes. Literal, utter ashes. We continue. she asked was, why can't women have two men? Because if she's impregnated, you don't know who the father is. Game, set, match, Mr. Tate. Because if a man has four wives, you know who the father is, aka Nick Cannon. He has eight, nine wives, but they all know who the father is. But it can't be the other way around because then you would not know who the father is if she's impregnated. Duh! Common sense! And she couldn't answer the question because she knows good and well what the answer will be. So she tries to laugh it up. Because <laughs> she knows she's... Her argument is defeated. So how does she do it? She deflects and she, she tries to laugh it off. Silly questions get silly answers. Silly games get silly prizes. So I'm so glad my man Mr. Tate shut it down from the start. Literally shut it down. Thank you for joining me on Talk to Talk Live on IG and YouTube. What a great show this, is, uh, this has been. On IG, YouTube. On the road to a thousand subscribers, like, subscribe, and comment. She had to laugh it off. And look at Britney's face. It is priceless because all of her dreams are dashed with such, such ideals. Dashed. Dashed, dashed, dashed. I, for a woman who went to college, I don't know how, how silly she must be, feel with su that such ideals can be taken on the road. It can never be taken on the road. As my, as my man Andrew Tate said, it's haram. Haram, H A R A M. Let's let's uh, let's get the meaning of that because a lot of people are asking, what the hell is haram? Haram is forbidden or 
prescribed by Islamic law. Forbidden. It's haram. There you see it on Talk Talk Live. It's haram. What a silly question to ask. Silly question. That's why I fear for all these polyamorous ladies out there. Because with all this, these sexual... Listen, Maury Povich built an empire on a lady such as these. On um, promiscuous ladies such as he built an empire. Do you know that? He'll never want the ladies who, who are the, uh, who know who their fathers are. He wanted the ladies who didn't know who their fathers were, who were promiscuous to a fault, and they came back time after time after time, wondering who the baby daddy was, because they slept with two guys, and then she doesn't know who the hell they were. That's why it's haram. It should be haram. Because now you got baby mothers out there scrambling to know who their baby father is because they can't handle it alone. Go figure. Marry before you carry. Oh. When will they ever learn? When will they ever, ever learn? I wonder if it. Uh, hand sanitizer. When will they ever learn? I shake my head at these ladies. I shake my head. I shake my head at these ladies. Thinking that they can defy the laws of biology. Defy the laws of mating and dating. But that's what's happening these days. It's definitely what's happening. And God love Andrew. He's laying waste to those ideas, to the, to, to the chagrin of her and to the absolute disdain of her. Because she thought she could change things. She thought she was the Joan of Arc of promiscuity. No, you're not. You're the, one of the long lines of hoes. Ms. Renner. Long line of hoes. You will follow in the footsteps of Kareem Steffens and Amber Rose. To a point where you may need to tattoo the rest of your body to feel good about yourself. Or at least satiate any sort of ills that you may have. Continuing. I don't know why the hey for Andrew Tate. I really don't. I really, I really, really don't. I really don't. I really don't. 
He's eloquent. He's succinct. He is erudite. And he's successful. What? Why cancel him? You know why they cancel him? Because they know his ideas are dangerous. They know his ideas make sense. Common sense. But feminism want to hear that. They don't want to hear common sense. They don't want their ideals to be broken. They're broken down to very last compound. Dissected, digested, and thrown away. They don't want that. That's why Andrew's dangerous. That's why he's dangerous. That's why he turns up on every feet. That's why women hate him because the fact of the matter is he points out their flaws in their game. Look at the faces of these people. Look at... If you see it on Talk Talk Live. Look! At my girl's face. Let me make sure I'm on camera here because I just, I just, I want to make sure. I want to make sure I'm on camera for this. And I am. Look again at Brittany Renner's face. It is priceless. Absolutely priceless. Because all of her ideas, all of her, all of them. Her secret to her success has been laid to bear and burnt to a crisp. Picked over by vultures. Clean to the bone. Clean. But 304s and, <laughs> listen, 304s and city girls, they're delusional in and of itself, so they'll, you know, make up their own reality again, but The tried, the trusted, and true always stands tall. Stands tall. Now we see Andrew laying bare these ideas in one fell swoop. And the thing about it is why his ideas are, are, will, will be heralded. Why? Because men sign up for those ideas. Nine out of ten men will sign up for those ideas. Okay, they'll be the one simp, they'll be the one uh, panda bear out there who will, you know, dance the dance of Madame Renner. However they, uh, however they can in order to gain her attention, favor, and P. Not that P. You know what I'm talking about. But... Most men didn't sign up for her idea that hoes can be heroes. Hey, there you go. Hoes are not heroes. They serve a purpose, yes. Sometimes they wear a cape. If, you know, if, 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 you know, you want to get into, uh, you know, into some sort of, you know, costume play. You know what I mean? Sometimes they wear capes. Sure. If it calls for it. But chances are, they'll never be held as the paragons of society. Something that irks Madame Renner to the core. Let me see if we are on course here. Yes, we are. And yes, we are. In perfect, perfect timing. Exactly. So thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. We are, where are we here? Yes, perfect timing. Absolutely perfect timing. So we're going to get into our third segment of things. And our third uh, discussion, a third uh, point of discussion. There we go. And how the developed world feminism needs men to survive. Feminism will have you think that women don't need men and are not in need of 
There are a wide amount of services to survive. And, 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 and what will be proven in this segment of the discussion between Just Pearly Things, Brittany Renner, and Andrew Tate is the fact that feminism and the developed world needs men to survive. If life was nasty, brutish, and short, as was once said by Charles Dickens, if life were nasty, brutish, and short, feminism would not be a thing. It would not be a movement. It would not be anything that woman would be able to follow. You know why? Because what would be first and foremost? Survival. And how do women survive in such hard times? Clinging to a man. Being with their men. Following manhood. So that their, their own their lives and the lives of their children can move forward. We had our own slice of that pie just these last few years under COVID. When we were all isolated. Oh yeah. Who are the ones getting the supplies? Mostly men. In certain capacities, women, of course. I mean, if in, in such civil times. But what if those civil times broke down? Ladies. What if they broke down? Who would you call them? The police? Well, the police are men really, so uh, if they're gone, then that's out the window. No, you'd ask for your men. Ladies. You'd ask for your men. Because infrastructure, construction, emergency services are run by men for the most part. You'll have your lady here and there, but not to the great and grand of men. So in this segment, we're going to talk about how feminism and the developed world needs men to survive. It's a little longer, but we're going to break in between. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. And happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas to you. Hope you're enjoying your holiday season. I know I am, as I said. Oh, got some beautiful scents, some more on the way. And I've got a few things I want to get out to Boxing Day, some Boxing Day sales. But anyways, I digress. I'm going back. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Let's go back to Talk Talk Live here. And again, get back to it. Denalva has a question for Andrew Tate on the subject we just discussed. Let's go.
Perfect. Absolutely perfect. This Andrew Chase is no joke. And there's a reason why they want to cancel him because he has views like this. But <clears throat> the more they try to cancel him, the greater his popularity. Because he speaks home truths. It is true. Femi feminism falls on its face. Falls. Without men to defend it. It falls. Especially in the modern world. If, as I said, life got nasty, brutish, and short, guess where feminism is then? Oh, they'll find a way to blame men for, for, for feminism losing. But at the end of the day, it's not the time for feminism. It's not the time for equal rights of women. It's the time to survive. And in times, in tough times, women then would need their men. You'll find how quickly all these average guys who are passed up for high value men and Chaz and Tyrones, how integral they will be to average females who shoot above the rim. And I do mean above. That's why he says feminism is only valid in times of good, in times of prosperity, in times where religion is not so orthodox and not so conservative. That's why feminism to a certain extent is a trickle in the Middle East, a trickle in Asia, a trickle in China. Unless you're in China and, and one of the free, the freer economic zones of China. Because it ain't democratic, remember. It's economic, economically free, but not democratically free. Even if you go to India, as they'll, they'll speak to uh, later, feminism takes a back seat in hard times. A back seat. That's why you'll only find it in the developed world. You'll only find the pink alternative in the developed world. You'll only find, sorry, you'll only find modern women in the developed world. Because you need men to defend it. You need men to build societies that will allow for feminism to thrive. Plain and simple. That's why in free democratic societies such as Canada, such as the United States, such as England, such as Germany, such as Holland, such as France, in these areas, feminism thrives. And that's where and feminism allows for modern women, it allows for the high cost of cooperation and submission. And what's the synonym for submission? Agreement. Just to let you know. Be in agreement with your man, but we'll go into that a little later as well. But this is, this is the truth. You go to South America, 
in most developing countries, feminism is not as strong as it is in the developed world. Nowhere near. Because in those areas, times are hard. And in, 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 in those areas where times are hard, you're going to find, for the most part, a very small feministic base. Because they know they need their men to survive. That's why you're getting... Now you see how this is all tying in? That's why you're getting a lot more submissive females in these areas of Eastern Europe where times tend to be harder. Areas in Asia where times tend to be harder. Areas of South America where times tend to be harder. Areas of Central America where times tend to be harder. Because they know they need their men to survive. Are you getting this? That's why a lot of these guys want to stay in those countries because of the fact that if they come here, they'll be influenced by feminism. And, the, and some of their submissive, cooperative ideals may be thwarted because of it. Now you see the tie in here. But as we go back to the premise, feminism needs developed world. You need a world in which there is a good amount of prosperity where women's rights can be uh, advanced. If not, it falls on its face. We continue. Perfect example there. She said it. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. But she said it right there. Per, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Auntie, Auntie Jenny. And 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 the, for women to be considered equals, you need an equal society. You need a pr prosperous society in which to grow and live. You couldn't carry, you couldn't take this show on a road in, uh, on, on a road to developing countries, and you can't take this show on the road to war, in a, in a war zone, in a war torn country. You think feminism is thriving in Ukraine right now? Really? When lines are on the line, when territories are at stake, do you think feminism is at the forefront of people's minds then? Or do people fall into the gender roles to which they were accustomed? Do women want to... Here's an, and here's the thing, as they, proved, as they pointed out here. If feminism, if women's rights, if the women's movement, if modern women are so tough, go fight a war. Do you want to fight a war, ladies? Would you like to take up arms at every beck and call? That's why enlistment in armies is usually about 2 to 5% of women. Oh, yes, they're promoted to higher positions because they got to see themselves as, as equal and fair and such. But it's usually about 2 to 5%. Go look it up. Because they know when the going gets tough, most women would rather hide. Get under a chair, get under a seat, or get behind the man to which, to whom they are married, 
engaged, or are a girlfriend. That's the long and the short of it, ladies. Tell me. I I I ask you to comment below. Comment in. in, in give me a, a comment in the comments. When does feminism? When does modern women thrive in a, in, in, in a time of war? Never has happened. Never has happened. That whole Top Gun stuff, where you have a lady flying around in an airplane and stuff. Well, yeah, of course you got machinery, you got guns and such. Of course you can fly around then, sure. But when it comes to hand to hand combat, they don't want to see none of that. Close controlled areas of combat. Okay, maybe we could do it, but it's been proven, ladies, especially by MMA fighters. <laughs> the best MMA uh, women cannot face. The worst of MMA male fighters. They literally throttle them. Because they don't have the tensile strength. They don't have the physical capabilities to carry on a fight. Now you add weapons to the game as well. Where is feminism now? I'll tell you where it is. Relegated to times of peace, to times of prosperity. That's where it's relegated to. That's why you've had a good run of feminism up till now. Because times are good for the most part. That's why women can run their mouth in times of prosperity. In times of dread, see how many of these average guys as women pass up will be run to. In times of war and strife, famine, pestilence, literal survival. That's what you women have to realize. And that's why you have to take advantage of the men that are available. Because whatever pink alternatives out there can't compare to a heterosexual male who's pissed off and has an ideology, as Andrew Tate had pointed out, to defend, uphold, and advance. Sorry. We continue. she admits that she's not a feminist. She's a bit smarter because she knows where her bread is buttered. Thank you for the comment there, Cass Forever. She said, never. You never want to fight a war. You never want to fight a war. You never want to be those ladies in Ukraine. You know where those ladies, and, and Andrew's going to prove it in a bit. Those ladies in Ukraine are far away from the the front. The war front. The war effort. Far away from it. That's why you gotta praise the men you have, as they so eloquently put by just pearly things. She said, What if these two burly gentlemen jumped into your house? You calling the police then? It takes 15 minutes to get to the police. You would literally have to be taken, as is the case in most 
Islamic countries, especially in Afghanistan now that's controlled by the Taliban. They are, ladies are literally shot in the street for holding feminist views. Shot in the street. Rape and pillage go on in developing countries of Africa, especially when it comes, uh, when, when it comes to times of rebellion. Then you need your men. Then you need your average guys. Then you need your under six foot guys who don't have a six pack, who don't have the six feet or more, and they don't have the six figure income. You need your men then. But not now in times of prosperity. Then ladies can shoot as high as the stars in terms of their wants and needs, unfortunately. But, as so eloquently put, femi feminism cannot thrive in a developing world. It cannot thrive in times of war. Just can't. Sorry. Somebody's at my door, unfortunately, but we're going to roll on here. <laughs> just quickly, I just want to stop there. What was her answer when two guys barged into a door? Play dead! One, play dead. Two, if they know you're not dead, try to reason with these gentlemen. And three, cater to their sexual wants and needs. Now you know what it's like to live in Afghanistan. Now you know what it's like to live in an African uh, country in times of war. Now you know what it's like to live in Central American times of war as a woman. Where's your feminism now? It's gone bye-bye. That's why for all these feminist advocates, for all these women's movement advocates, where are you when times are hard? You're lucky you live in a, a, in a country such as Canada. You're lucky you live in a country such as North America when these ideas can thrive. And who makes it possible? Man. Just saying. Oh. Lost my rag there for a second. <laughs> Lost my rag there. Continue.
There it is, guys. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. There it is, guys. He put it in plain language. Where are the women? In the Ukraine. They're in Dubai. They're in Canada. They're in Poland. They're away from the war front. Away from it. Where's feminism? Gone. Because when times are hard, that goes out the window. That's why feminism is... A t is <laughs> Is a movement because of men elected to be one because we created a space so that you can have a feminist movement. There it is. We've created a world where you can be a feminist. So who are the greatest advocates for feminism? Mostly men. Who's allowed for hypergamy? Mostly men. Men have. Because in times of strife, hypergamy goes right out the window. Right out. And he says again, let me rewind that just quickly here. Let's go back a little further. There's no fucking women on the front line in Ukraine. That is silent bullshit. But other than that, I'm quite strong. Everyone would fight for the uh, fight for the protect myself differently. In with There it is. There it is. That's what I wanted to come to. That part right there. When a man wants to act like a woman and a woman wants to act like a man, a.k.a. the pink alternative. That's when things get messed up. Now, I don't want to get canceled here. Again, in a free and just society... LGBTQ 2S society can thrive. And so it shall be. I'll be the last one to stand in the way of such ideals. But that can only happen in a world of prosperity, in a world of peace, in a world of democracy. You ever try to find the... Uh, well, let's, let's take a look at the World Cup. In such a religious country, did they push for any sort of LGBTQ2S ideals there? No, they didn't. That was mainly silenced. Oh yeah, they had to protest and this and this and that, but at the end of the day, there are much... I mean... There are much greater causes to be fighting for than that. One of them being the kafala system. In the world of Islam. I just had a visitor here. Uh, my aunt has just uh, come forward with a bit of, uh, with, a, with a few prezzies here, and yes, I appreciate that. Glad tidings. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, yes, indeed. And what what would this be? Oh, my God. <laughs> what have we got here? Open and see what it is. Is it, it is, is it, is it what I think it is? It it's, is what I, what you think it, it is. It is. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> And the, the, the ones the fruit cake. I think you know, fruit cake like and cake. of course and black, black cake. cake. Yeah. Uh, how much? I actually uh, love that black cake. Oh, this is good black I cake. It was in the car all day. 
so. Oh, it's, it's cold, cold too. It's cold. Yeah. It's so cold let too. It, let, it, let it get to room temperature. Oh, no, no, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, my aunt has uh, just come through just yeah, to support the just show. Just left work. Yeah. Just left work. Thank you so much. How yeah, was your How was your Christmas? Okay. Yeah. Oh, Christmas was awesome. Too short. Too short. <laughs> Don't worry. You got New Year's coming. Don't That's worry right. about that. That's right. <laughs> if you That's miss right. Christmas, then New Year's is coming. Yeah. Thank you very much for this. Is okay. great. Anthony, Thank you. Anthony's upstairs. I'll okay. I'll, I'll be there in a sec. I'll be there okay, in a bit. Take your time. Yes, indeed. Wow, that's a lovely Christmas greeting, wasn't it? That was great. That was fantastic. Yes, indeed. Thank you for joining me. Talk, talk live. Live, subscribe, comment. I've got fruitcake. And uh, I got fruitcake and uh, and black cake. Mmm, very delicious. Well, it's uh, for the hardworking rape, though. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, this for later. This is fantastic. Oh, my black and my fruitcake. Yummy for dummies. Getting back to it. Yes, so the kafala system in Qatar during the World Cup. Nobody cared about that. That was slipped under the rudder. They, they, they only cared about who they can sleep with in the Islamic countries where it's haram. And they told you this from the start, but uh, again, <sighs> well, again, I can go on another diatribe, but anyways, we're talking about feminism here, so let me stop. In this world, a free world, feminism is allowed to thrive and survive. In a world where religion forbids it, or there is war, or there are hard times available. Feminism is, you know, nothing but a fringe movement. So we got to keep that in mind. Anyways, let's move on with the conversation here. Move it up a bit here. How stupid, and, and this is how stupid, this is how asinine and stupid this woman is. I don't know, I, I just call her brown skin girl. I don't understand her when she says, I don't need a man, I'll just call a mechanic. Who do you think the mechanic is? You've got to see the show. You've got to literally see the show. And this brown skin girl, I forget her name. This girl, she's in brown leather, pleather, I don't know what it is, but she comes out with the most outlandish, outrageous, ridiculous ideas on the planet. And her common sense is that of a gnat. A low-lying gnat. A low-lying worm underneath the ground. Worm. Not to say that she's a worm herself, but her ideas are. So let me state that. When she comes out and says, literally, in her long nails, floppy hairdo, and pleather outfit, she comes out to say, hey, I don't need a man in my daily life. If I need my car fixed, I'll call a mechanic. Though there are female mechanics out there and available. What segment of society make up female mechanics? Guess. I would venture to say three to five percent. I could be wrong. But I say about three to five percent of women are mechanics. Chances are if you're going to, if you're going to find a mechanic, they tend to be men. Because remember. Ladies don't like dirty jobs. As has been proven in prior occasions, they'd rather be have a high-profile job that doesn't pay than a dirty job that does. What's one of those dirty jobs? Mechanics. Well, until they come out with clean energy and that sort of thing, they, I'm sure you'll find a lot more ladies involved because they tend to be cleaner. 
Not to say that there aren't ladies who don't like dirty jobs, but at the end of the day, you need men. Men create the society that you live in, period. As I say, without men, life would be nasty, brutish, and short. But she doesn't get that. Let us continue with her asinine diatribe. She is so silly. She is so absolutely silly. She, she's, she is two sandwiches away from a picnic basket. She's the, the the elevator doesn't get away all the way to the top floor. Here's the thing. I, I, I can't understand. Pearly asks. quite seriously, uh, quite eloquently. What if the police, uh, what, what, what if you were in trouble? What if you, or again, where, what if you were next to harm? What would you, what would you do? I call the police, she'd say. L police are pretty much 90 to 94% made up of men. I, I could be wrong there. I would say 90%. 90, I'll go, I'll, I, you know what? I'll go as far as 85% of policemen. Are men. I'll give it 15 to 20 percent of females, but I give it. You know. But the next question that she asks is true. What it takes usually 10 to 15 minutes for police to arrive at any call. What do you do then? And your life is in imminent danger. What do you do then? She couldn't answer the question. Watch. Watch this, watch. On so many fronts. She's just so silly. I'll let Andrew answer, please. She just said she didn't need a man, but now she says we need you. Pick a struggle. Pick a freaking struggle. Life can't be this hard. Well, it's definitely harder on those who lack common sense. Auntie, Auntie Jenny is so right on the money with this. She literally says there are blue jobs and pink jobs. I remember that from my ex. My ex-girlfriend used to tell me that. Oh, her sister used to tell, tell me that. In her household, she knew there were blue jobs and there were pink jobs. And they had that understanding. And they lived harmoniously. What's happening these days is live, women want to do blue jobs and there are certain men who want to do pink jobs. Let me repeat that again. There are certain women who want to do blue jobs. Certain men want to do pink jobs. That's where things go. Over the
the hills and down the way. That's where things get square pegs, round holes sort of deal. What? What? She is so clueless. And and and, and, and listen. That's why Auntie Jenny's correct. That's why and, 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 and again, Andrew, put it bluntly. You say you don't need men, but you need the police. You need emergency services. You need infrastructure. You need men in your daily life. When is it gonna take what is it gonna take for feminists to understand that? When are they gonna have their come to Jesus moments? Or is this your representative? To a lot of guys, this is how you sound. Silly. Absolutely silly. But let the silliness continue. No, see, this is what we're talking about here. The, the absolute lunacy of some of these feminists. The, the absolute brain-dead mentality of some of these feminists. She literally... Not ha needing a man is not that deep. You know why it's not that deep? It's because times are good. Take that show to Africa. Take that show to Asia. Take that show to the Middle East. Take that show to Central America, South America. Then you'll understand. She's had it way too good. To a point where she can literally turn around and say, Oh, it's not that deep. You're not that deep. You're thick. You're absolutely thick. It's so ridiculous to hear this. This woman has, oh my God. Just, oh. I throw my hands up. I throw my hands up. I don't know, I don't know how the tolerance level. You know what, simply put, I'm looking at Pearlie and I'm thinking, you know what, it keeps her there, keeps her listening to this woman. All of the views, all of the comments, all of the money she can make off this show. Although this was demonetized. Even though this was demonetized. All of the notoriety she, notoriety she can get from this. This is making her channel. The amount, what she, she loses the demonetization, she, she, it raises in terms of subscriptions. In terms of subscribers. For a woman to have these sort of ideas, is, it's bonkers. Her, her head isn't screwed on too tight. It just, it just isn't. And if this is your representative of feminism, ladies, I don't know what to say. I literally don't know what to say because it doesn't have the common sense to make an argument for Christ's sake.
shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. They know they're at a loss for any of these answers. So what do they do? They go to sign language in order to prove their point, which is no point at all, really. This is... This is, this is Feminism 101. This is their playbook. Move the goalposts. Deflect. Have an answer for one area of questioning because Denalva had an answer saying, oh, I can fix a Bentley. <laughs> Ladies, you got to do better than this. Seriously, you got to do better. This is, this is, this is terrible. This is just terrible. It is terrible how things have moved. It is terrible that this is your representative. But the thing about it is, okay, she may lack in certain in certain in certain ways in certain areas, but at the end of the day, most women are like this. Despite her alleged level of intelligence, most women are like this. In terms of defending feminism. Oh, we haven't had our shot. Oh, we haven't had our day. Oh, we... Uh, uh, <laughs> Again, STEM careers are dominated by men. If offered to ladies, they're advocating for ladies. They're pushing for ladies to get into STEM, to get into research, to get into dirty jobs, to get into utilities, all these different things. They turn them down completely. Why? Because it's too bloody hard, or it's too bloody dirty, or it's too bloody dangerous. Therein lies the reason for any sort of pay gap, even though women are uh, paid the same as men, but at the end of the day, they don't want to do dirty, dangerous jobs. Comment. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna comment. I'm not gonna say anything because I listen. I'm not traditional. I'm, I'm a traditional woman, except I'm not a virgin. Except I don't want to talk about my body count. What? You want to be considered a traditional woman, yet you don't want to talk about body count. Perfect. Uh, uh, Excellent question from Jess Pearly Things. Excellent uh, question from Pearl. She literally said, put feminism right on its heels, right on its backside. Nothing else to say that, oh, I don't want to talk about my body count. Of course you don't want to talk about your body count. Because you know, it would lower your... <laughs> Lower your stature in the eyes of men if you did. Lower it. Absolutely lower it. Unfortunately. And this is the problem we have here. When are feminists feminist going to have this come to Jesus moment? And realize they need men. The first feminists were married. Feminism thrives because men allow it to thrive. In times of war and strife, it's gone. It's out of here. As was stated earlier, no, <laughs> no 
man of the military in Afghanistan is going to defend a woman's school in times of war. In times when they know Taliban is coming. And if they did, off with their heads it would, uh, they would go. Time to defend yourself. Time to survive. Feminism doesn't survive in those times of strife. She goes on to, uh, to, to something that we'll discuss on tomorrow's show, but we're going to move on a little further on to uh, the, the subject of life being harder for men. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, if you've reached the top end of society, men have a right to exercise options. When we say exercise options, ladies, we're talking about the whole C word, not the word you think. It is the word that would advocate for, that would mean cheating. Yes, cheating. And the fact of the matter is, if a man has made himself to be the best among us men, the best of the best, then women, as is their nature, will throw themselves at these men to try to get a piece of their resources, a piece of their a piece of their of the prizes of, of their lives, really. A piece of their spoils. There you go. And so in that case, temptation will be there. And if and if temptation is there Chances are, men will take advantage of these choices. And, and, and for the most part, as KS used to say, it's not considered cheating, it's considered exercising one's options. In other words, men have fought their way to be the best man possible, and if there's certain advantages to that, they should be allowed to Fill their hat with those spoils for a time. Now it's not; it's, it, it, they don't have to do it, but they are they they can they can do it however they wish. They can. So we're going to have a little quick discussion on this issue. We have a few more subjects to uh, take care of here on Talk Talk Live. Yes, indeed. Oh yeah, we got a little ways to go here on Talk Talk Live. Thank you for joining us. We're on the way to 1,000 subscribers. Like, subscribe, comment. Looking forward to this next segment here as we move. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. We're moving on. Second. Let me move this forward a bit. Here we go.
Excellent point. Excellent point. He's right. Women don't realize how hard it is to be a man these days. They really don't. They take men for granted. They don't understand how hard it is for a man to build himself up to be the best in a society of men. It is extremely difficult. Remember, women are born with value. All they have to do is be at 8, 9, or 10, and they can walk on any yacht, any ship, and hobnob with the rich and famous in any part of society. All they, have, all they need is beauty. That's it. And that's free. For a man to be on that same yacht, he has to go through hell and back to build a business or make himself such of such utility that it could be demonstrated on LinkedIn or worldwide or on any or in any sort of employment space. And only then can they get on the ship. But here, the, the, the thing about it is, one, uh, once you start living the good life, women want, women want to stop you from having the spoils of that life, including women. I get it. I was the son of a high-value man. I get it. He had, the, he had blood, sweat, and tears written all over him in order to get to the higher echelons of life. And yet, women have made it so that you're only allowed one woman out of that. One. Even I had to reason with my father. I said, Dad, you know what? I get it. I totally get it. You have worked your... And, and, and I had to reason with him uh, way back when. This was years ago. I had to reason with him and say, you know what, Dad? I get it. You've worked hard. You've done great in your life. If you wish to partake in the, the fruits of your labor elsewhere, I get it. As long as you don't embarrass the family. Well, I never said it in so many words, but anyways. But just for your, your elucidation, as long as you don't embarrass the family, as long as you don't have any kids out of wedlock, as long as you don't buy any big ticket items, then that should be enough. And as long as you come home to said individual, your wife, then that should be enough. Should be enough. Uh, you can't be like a serial cheater and such, because that, you know. But every now and again, you got to look the other way, ladies. And that's what he's saying here. With all that temptation from being a top, high-value man, temptation is all around. And sooner or later, he'll, he'll give in to that temptation. He will. He'll, he'll, he can choose not to, and that's fine, but sooner or later, he will. He may just do that. I say no, I wouldn't say will, I'd say may. He may just give in. What are you gonna do? Punish him for it? Take away his kids, take away his house, even though he, he may have truly paid for that himself. Hopefully he's taking up a prenuptial dream, but other than that, that is indeed the question. But you gotta realize, ladies, I mean and I'll explain this later in, in, in the show. Women all they have women have had their choice of men. They've had their whole phase. They've had their three or four time. They've had their city girl place for five, six, seven years where they can choose whatever man they want to sleep with, whomever they want, run up a body count, and yet not reveal it. But when a man finally gets to the upper echelons of of society. You're asking him to be monogamous. What? Whether e either in a relationship or married, you're asking him to be monogamous. That 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 is simply unfair. Now you would retort and say, "Well, if he's going to do it, do it while he was single." Well, 
as most as as most psychologists know, you you tend to be more attractive in a married relationship with these ladies because then you know you're a certified good man. You're a good catch. So the pressure is ramped up even further being married. So what's a man to do then? I ask you ladies, what's the man to do then? Especially if you're married to a high value man. I get it. If you're married to a guy, you know, an ordinary Joe. <coughs> excuse me. I get it if you're married to an ordinary Joe. And he's earning a certain amount of year. And he's coming home to you. Chances are he'll tend to be loyal then because women won't see him as being attractive then. As more or less attractive. Well, you can be, you know, an ordinary Joe and still be attractive. I get it. You know what I mean? You can still be a Chad or Tyrone and still be an ordinary Joe, remember. But, if you tend to be a high value man, you tend to be, <laughs> there's less chance, there's more of a chance of people cheating on you then. If you're not, there's less of a chance. So therefore, it's better to marry an ordinary man. But you don't want that, do you? As has been said, and as has been proven, I, I, I think Jalen uh, Jail Rose. I, I was reading on, I was watching on. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, O'Shea Du Jackson, great guy, fantastic work he does, and he was saying he's he's got he's he's po he, he, well he's relatively polyamorous, or he's polygamist. He's got two wives. He's got his baby mother and he's got his wife right there, both wearing pajamas. Because they know they'll have to share men. He, O'Shea was saying. And most women, if you ask them these days, they'd rather share a high-value man than to be with an ordinary guy who will be lo who will love them and be loyal to them. See, that's why I say you... I think women are starting to get this way, but most of them aren't feminists. Feminists want these... <laughs> it's feminists when, they, when, when, it, when it's called upon. Most of these feminists won't allow these men to seek out these other options they want them to be they want them to be traditionalist and be locked to one female and yet adhere to new age ideas adhere to a woman who has a multitude of men in her past yet that won't be revealed it's a good thing it's not. But it's not. It's not. It's, 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 it's not for public viewing. Not even for your husband. Is it for public viewing? Not even for your boyfriend. Is it for public viewing? We continue. We're gonna move it on. From, oh, no, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move it on from there. So 
sorry. Uh, and he's right. He's right. As a high volume man, you don't have to say much. You don't have to say much at all. But the exercise options, it's a, it's like, and this is what a, a lot of women, feminists, and you know, women, women in general, don't get. Now, as was was pointed out by, by. Andrew in another segment of the show he was saying quite quite literally that a man can engage in sex with one woman and yet come home to his wife and take a lie detector test and, and they would pass the flying to colors if the questions were about their de- love and devotion of that woman because sex is sport it is a it is a leisure activity it is exercise to a man. He's exercising his sexual needs. And he's and he is exercising his options. But he can always come home because he knows his wife is, you know, the best homemaker. Uh, his status is, is is thoroughly increased by her being there. She's her comfort, she's her guide, she's, she's fit, feminine, fem- friendly, cooperative, submissive. She's caring and considerate. She's the light of his life. He can't do without her. We could do that, but then we have to, we have to say we don't want to do the, the nasty stuff to our wives. We want to do it with the hose, for lack of a better word. Or do it to the ladies, to the to, to the good time girls, to the to the bit of fun that we have available. And as and as Andrew eloquently said, it's fifteen. Well, you know, you know, two texts, five minutes. It's done. If he can prove his credentials, it doesn't take long. It is. Like breathing, you go out. Yeah, oh, it's like it's, you know. It's like you know. It's like it's like going to the gym. Literally, it's like going to the gym. Un- unfortunately, unfortunately, and I don't want to bring it to, the, uh, to, this, to this to this segment of things, but I have to say, it's like going to the gym. I need cardio. I have a trend. There's there. I need cardio. There's a treadmill for cardio. You get on the treadmill, you run a bit, you get that sweat. Then you get off the treadmill. You wipe it down. You make sure it's used. <laughs> I don't want to say that. You wipe it down. You wipe it down, and you move on. That's why it's always important, ladies, to guard your femininity, guard your your virginity, guard your modesty in these areas, because men will see you as more valuable than a treadmill. Ladies of the evening, hoes, these are ladies are treadmills. That's what men run on. We, run, we like running on treadmills at a gym. We go to a gym and run on a treadmill. If you don't consider yourself a treadmill, guard your... Guard your, uh, your, your virginity, your... Virtue, your sexual space with your life. Guard it. Consider it one of the. uh, Cherish it. Because men value that. They value women who protect. They're sexual beings. Yeah. So, again, it is because you don't want to be you don't want to be the treadmill in the gym. You don't, ladies, you don't want to be the treadmill in the. Do not be the treadmill in the gym. You have a choice. Do you want to be the treadmill in the gym, or do you want to be something different? Do you want to have a useful shelf life or do you want to be more than that? It's up to you. It's a choice. 
That's the choice of a, of a feminist society, right? Let's move on. Yes. How feminists create a post-marriage society and how women can correct it. Yes. The thing about feminists is they're feminists when it's called upon them to be feminists. If not, then they'll be traditional. See, here's the thing. Women want to be considered as equals until they get to the courts, until they get to family court. Then they're not so equal. Then they're damsels in distress. Knowing that if such role is played, they will be compensated for it. Especially when one is married. You don't have to necessarily do that anymore. There, there's a... Uh, there was a judgment uh, out last uh, last month that if uh, I mean last year, sorry, that if a woman lives long enough with a man in a common law relationship, she's entitled to alimony. She's entitled to compensation from that man because she lived in a certain life to which she was accustomed. Now these are usually reserved for the richer gentlemen of our world, but yes. But ladies have made it such that they take advantage of their lives with men, take the resources of men, and now they see, how, we, we, we view how feminists have created a post-marriage society and made marriage a bad deal to men. Literally a bad deal. They want any part of it. Just make sure that my... Uh, I think it's still recording here. It is. We're good. Good to go. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Super thanks. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all that. But this is part of the reason. This is where feminism takes a back seat to certain things. Because again, you know, women want to be considered equals, yes, but they use the courts in order to <sighs> allow for greater equality. So, we're gonna go to a certain point in this conversation here. Uh, we have a visitor and uh, she's she's asking what? What are you, what are you asking, my dear? See, I have to be a bartender as well. You see, I'm at a bar, so I'm at uh, it's, it's 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 the Red Pill Bar, uh, and I have to give up drinks. So, what what drinks are we looking I need at here? A Fanta pineapple. A fine a Fanta pineapple. Yes. I need a uh, cream soda. Cream soda. Place. Yes. Yes. Who at, sent you here? At the, the the powers that be upstairs. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, oh my god, a ginger ale. A, ginger a ale. Pineapple. Yes. Yes. And Let's get them all out here because uh, this will be the one. It's the one time. The yes. one time you want. Any um, anything else? Let's. Um, um, I think we're good. I think we'll just go with. We we'll go with these. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Any any money? Any any tip? Uh, maybe later. Oh God. Anyway. No tip, eh? Unbelievable. But anyway, let us continue with the conversation. Yes. Um. Feminists have created a post-marriage uh, post society to which men do not want to get married anymore. You'll find falling numbers of men wanting to get married because either marriage takes advantage of men to a point where they lose half of their fortunes to women at their whim so they see it as a bad deal unless you get a prenup. And we'll do that in another show. Uh, well, yeah, I think I think I will do another show. Let me mark that down. Um, yes, indeed. How prenups? Oh, let me see. How prenups? Prenuptial agreements are are necessary in post marriage society. Yes. We'll delve into that. Yes, indeed. That's a very good subject. We'll, del uh, we'll, del we'll delve into that in another Talk Talk Live. But yes. So, feminism is out the door when it comes to divorce settlements and family court. 
You don't find any feminists calling for equality in front of a family court. No, because it serves them no purpose. Serves them no purpose. Gives them no advantage. To which they will gladly take, event, uh, gladly take advantage of. Don't see any feminists at any family court anywhere in society. None. Where is feminism then? Where is the call for equality then? I want equal rights. I don't want I want to be held to the same standards of men. No, you don't find that. Women are silent when it comes to that subject. And that's why men aren't going for bad deals anymore. Unless they have a prenup number one or number two. It's clearly it's clearly a time where men can be assured that women won't take advantage of men in family court. There we go. And part of that comes from the fact that of our last subject that when we when we exercise uh, options, women can say, "Oh, you know, man's been bad to me." Da, 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 even though he's kept me in a certain life to which I was accustomed, but he's been bad to me, so therefore I'm going to take half of what he owns. You see the frustration, ladies? Anyways, let's go on here. Clearly, we're going to soon have to call a cap on this. We're going to continue here on Talk Talk Live. Thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe, comment. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Okay, let's just advance this a bit. Here we go. Yes. Let us continue. Perfect. Andrew Tate is laying it on the line, and you know what? 
women will not defend that action. They won't. They won't. The game has been rigged to a point where a man steps out of line, his fortune's taken. But if a woman steps out of line, as was so eloquently put by Andrew Tate, and he comes home and tries to discipline his woman, she could claim emotional abuse in certain, in certain jurisdictions. And that man will be arrested, they can go to divorce court, and his fortune will be taken from him. So why get into marriage unless there's a prenuptial in, uh, agreement involved? And as Andrew Tate so eloquently put, he can head to sunny locales, get his fill of women, especially if you are well-to-do as such as him, and not have to give up nothing of your fortune. Nothing. Because men are seeing marriage as being a bad deal, a raw deal. Nothing more, nothing less. Another subject. Oh, marriage is a raw deal. Oh my God. I'm just picking up. Marriage is a raw deal to men. Raw deal. Raw, 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 raw deal. The only way it's not a raw deal is if marriage survives. And the only way marriage survives is if men and women are in traditional roles or men have so much money that he can afford to do what he wants within that relationship and at the end of the day give her her, her, her stipend, let her go on with her life and he can carry on with his. But in middle class, working class, Marriages, it's a problem because men can be taken, their fortunes can be taken away. And men don't like bad deals. Men snuff out bad deals. Marriage is a bad deal today. Bad deal. Unless you have a prenuptial agreement, it's a very bad deal. And women don't want to sign up for that. So guess what men are doing? They're just saying, you know what? Either I'm going to get a traditional woman somewhere to whom will cater to my needs and be a traditional woman to me, or I'll just, just divest myself from any sort of idea of marriage. I'll have children, I'll take care of the kids, but other than that, she's not taking my fortune. Because they see it's a bad deal. Simply as a bad deal. We continue.
break even. And that's the reality, too. It's like if those morals and principles are not instilled in a man, none of that shit matters. So obviously the, the child support stuff obviously gets close home to me because I'm already 50000 It's just, just some lawyer fees trying to get him to provide. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it sucks because it's like you play in the NBA. Like, why couldn't you? Why don't you want to do more? And it's just because, again... Because you weren't a traditional woman! My dear Ms. Renner. That's why. That's why. Getting back to Andrew Tate's example. Andrew, so eloquently put, if a woman was good to me, was always there for me, was a traditional wife in the truest sense, and she and and she knew that he was promiscuous. And she wanted a divorce, but she begged him not to leave her in poverty. He would take care of her. Yes. Yes. I've been privy to that. Believe me, I've been privy to that. In my own family, I've been privy to that. But now we have the example of per, uh, of, of, of Brittany Renner. And Brittany's saying she's having to fight in, in family court for not only custody, but child support from her NBA boyfriend. Well, here's the thing, Brittany. You were a hoe, and you wrote books on hoism, and you did all these nasty things out there in public, and he read the whole facts. So what do you expect from this man? What do you expect from Mr. Washington? I don't get it. What do you expect? His undying devotion? You must be kidding. You must be kidding. No man wants to be with the town strollop. None. It devalues him. It doesn't give him higher status. He's considered a sucker. When you put yourself out there on Instagram, write a book about your hoish ways, don't expect a high-value man to come running for you. He'd rather give you the baby, yes, pay the child support, however it is, but you'll never be a high-value man's woman. In other words, he won't marry you. He won't marry you. He won't. He won't. I know a few women in our time, in my time, great women, but the fact of the matter is the whole fact is out there. It's out there. So what do you expect us men to do? Take you in? Wash you clean of your sins? For your mannish ways? Well, there's one way to do that, but again, that will involve, you know, a certain agreement, but I ain't going to go into that. But they won't take you in. They won't. Men are territorial, and men are all about prestige and status. And if you bring down our prestige and status as a woman like Brittany Renner would be, sorry, we tend not to marry those women. Tend not to. Unless you are, again, a sexual Olympian. Or your pancakes are out of this world. And I mean the, well, I mean the ones you fry up. Not the ones you lay down. <laughs> but this is the issue right here. So well, that's what that's what that's what Brittany's trying to change. She's trying to make the whole the housewife make her make the three or fours and city girls of this world <sighs> paragons of virtue and status. When men never signed up for that throughout history, but she's trying to change history. God love her. She tried, but. Chances are she won't. And she'll go on the long line of Kareem Steffens and Amber Rose and soon those tattoos will go on her head or her 
face or eyebrow or ear or whatever, you know. So uh, a, a form of you know self sabotage and, and torture. But there you go. I highly doubt that. I really highly doubt that. I'm sorry. I have to say it. I have to say this. Brittany Renner, she say, oh, it's a choice between two guys. No, two people. I, I, I don't think so. I think it was a case where uh, they, were, they were shagging and they were having a good time. And all of a sudden, she came back and said, I'm pregnant. She just popped it on him. Something, so, something tells me in the, the pit of my stomach that she, that they weren't, they were, this wasn't the plan. Good, good on Mr. Washington for not saying anything, but I really don't believe the fact that she will come out and say, oh, we had planned for a child and this is, a, no, no, no. Married people do that. People who are shagging don't. And what it usually happens is baby's coming. Well, she knew the end was near. How do I trap him? How do I keep him in a life to which I am accustomed and still, I am still very much attracted to him. Trap him with pregnancy. That's it. And so she did. Hell, she wrote part of her book on how to entrap high value slash ballers slash entertainers. Because she literally said, ballers don't put condoms on. So, again. Forever commitment, yeah. Family. Okay. So, okay. Again, as someone who is literally going through this, uh -huh. if I made more money than him, I would be paying him child support, and that would be fair to me. But this is what's really interesting. What's really interesting. You would never consider making more money than your men. Brittany, I'm sorry you would not. You would not. That's the reason why you got with the ball in the first place, Brittany. Brittany, don't lie to us. The reason why you got with a ball in the first place is so that you don't have to take of your own money and spend it on a man. That was never your intention. Your intention was to have your sexual fun, treat ho hoism as a virtue, and then find a ball to whom you will settle down with. The fact, that, but the fact of the matter is that never did happen. It backfired spectacularly. In front of the whole world, because you went on every radio station, as was proven by the uh, mediator, mediocre, mediocre tutorial reviews show. Subscribe to mediocre uh, tutorial reviews. He does a whole little expose on Madame Renner. Man read the whole facts and said, "Nope, I'm out of here. You're on your own. Now I'll see you in court." There it is. I know about a plan. I mean, she could say plan, but I, I, I really don't, I really don't believe it is. But again, her truth, right? Anyway.
Let's just say, let's put it put it bluntly. He said he ain't gonna get played like the by the likes of Brittany Renner. Hell no! As pretty as she is, no way. Men have had to get ruthless with family court and with dating, relationship, marriage, divorce being the way it is today. Men have had to get ruthless. Get sex where you can. Get sex where you can. Get into relationships where you are. Get out of them when you when you need to. And you do them on a needs must basis. Especially if you're a high value man. Because you are targeted. A woman's idea, ideal, is to have the white people confess this, 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 that. But at the end of the day, they want to keep it. They want to keep the high picket, the, 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 the white picket fence. They want to keep the house. They want to keep the car. They want to keep themselves into the life in which men have brought them to, uh, for the most part. To which they are accustomed. That's exactly what Brittany Renner is uh, going, to, uh, going to argue. What she's arguing now. If you step out of a Ferrari, my son needs to step out of the Ferrari. Keeping him in the life to which he was accustomed. And since I'm his mother, well, I need to be in that life too. Again, bad deal. Bad deal. Especially when there is a inequality when it comes to relationships. And the man is a true breadwinner and the woman just pops into his life. And yes, there is a love affair and there are things happening there and they want to get married. But at the, only, at the end of the day, and I have so many of my colleagues say this, they're insisting on prenups. Insisting on it. Insisting on it. Why? Because they've worked their darnness to get to a certain level and they don't want to see a woman take it from their hands. And you need to be ruthless, as, as, as Andrew Tate thoroughly says. Sorry. Women have made it so that being in a relationship is a bad deal. And as Andrew Tate's already said, you know how you make, you know how to make better deals, women? By not being so promiscuous. By, again, prioritizing marriage, being traditional women. But women don't want to hear that. Feminists don't want to hear that. They don't want to be traditional women. Do you? Do you? you rather take the rough with the smooth, right? Right? Let's be fair and frank about this, right? Rather take the rough with the smooth. Well, men aren't taking the rough with the smooth anymore. If they take the rough with the smooth, they'll go somewhere and get something a lot smoother and bring it home. Or they'll stay out there. They'll go to places where marriage is upheld. Traditional values are upheld. Are you getting this, lady? Your promiscuity is costing you good relationships with men. Your lack of family values is costing you good relationships with men. The family courts are costing you good relationships with men. Not so long and the shorter. So, for a guy like Andrew Tate, I very much doubt he may get married. I, I very much doubt it. Unless it's, su it's, 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 it's such a great deal that he'll take it. A lot of gentlemen are just becoming bachelors for the most part. They'll have their kids on their own time. They'll get into relationships on their own time. But they won't stay because they know it costs them money. It'll cost them a fortune. They'll cost them their fortune. And unless you have money to dole out like that, they don't want to do it. It's a bad deal. Sorry, feminists. You, this is the, this is the, the, you and many other women have created this life, taken advantage of it, and now men don't want to give you that advantage anymore. Because you sullied the process. Sullied it.
are a tour de force on this show. Bam! Even Brittany Renner, who has run this game, has to agree. Has to agree. Andrew put it right. It doesn't take much to raise a child. It's not very expensive to raise a child. What is expensive is the mother that comes with it. The mother that comes with the child. Because as he said, and as Brittany will say, and she has said on many occasions, if my son is wearing Gucci, I want to wear Gucci. If my son's living in a certain accommodation, I want to live in that certain accommodation. If my son gets out of a certain car from his father, I want the same car. All that costs whom? Not ladies. For the most part, it's guys. It's us. We have to pay for that. Men aren't taking that deal in. They'd rather just pay the child support. Of course, it's attuned to your salary, so even then, it's still going to be a hit. But not as much as a hit as if you slap alimony on that, support payments on that. It's a raw deal, ladies. And you're giving us no incentive. To take the deal. The only way that happens, I'll tell you how that happens, prenups. The lead attorney has always said it, prenups. Guess who, whose fortune did save? Dr. Dre, when his wife was divorcing him. She was about to take half of his fortune. He's about $800 million. He, he's worth about $800 million, $800 million to a billion dollars. She would have taken half of that for all the work that he did. That she had no involvement with. But even though she is, she, she, Dr. Dre's ex is a lawyer herself, she had, he had a prenup done. And as much as she tried to have it thrown out, out of the court, said that she was under duress, said that she was. Uh, she, she was out of her mind, said that, you know, Dr. Dre threatened her to sign the deal. She was under no threat. She, saw, she signed that prenup nuptial agreement. And so she was given a sizable amount here. She was given a $100 million settlement. A $100 million settlement. But Dr. Dre celebrated it. He celebrated the, the, the $100 million settlement. You know why? Because he got to keep his fortune. That's why. That's why I say, ladies, you want to be married? Sign a prenup. Sign a prenup. So when you go, you take what's yours, he takes what's his. I dare you to sign a prenup. If not, get used to this whole scenario of marriages being post uh, this whole society being a post-marriage society going forward. Because no men are taking bad deals anymore. They aren't. They aren't. They aren't. Especially with the way that you treat men these days. Especially when you the high prices you cost for your time these days. And especially with the end result of divorces these days. They're not taking the bad deal. They're not doing it. They're not doing it. They'll be as ruthless as Andrew is. Mark my words. And if you want our protection and provision, ladies, you better smarten up. That's all I got to say. Again, she would never be in a position where she was making more money than her man. That wasn't her intent. Her intent was to take whatever she could from him. So that's crap, Madam Renner. Absolute garbage. You would never put yourself in that position because that would piss you the hell off as it has most men. Continue.
a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because she knows to whom she has targeted her. Her gaze. Her gaze was targeted at ballers and entertainers. Those who would, who can live off the travails of million dollar salaries. Therefore, if they're living under the million dollar lifestyle, she and her son can live a million dollar lifestyle. That was the plan all along when she left Mississippi. I already proved that on Talk Talk Live on the earlier broadcast. What she's telling you is, if he's watching Peppa Pig, that's a cable bill. He has to pay for it. Yes, that's all well and good. That's usually cheaper. But if she's... If she... If he... If the son was coming from a mansion or a high-end condo where NBA baller was living, then she would request to the courts that her son stay in said environment. And guess who gets the spoils of that? For a similar environment. And guess who gets the spoils? Yes! That was her plan all along. Her plan all along was to do that. But there you go. How absolutely crass of this lady. I had no choice because he nuts in me. You wanted him to nothing you. That was your plan all along. You wrote. You did. <laughs> oh my god. I smell my nexus. Oh god. I recommend. I, I do recommend. Zhirzhov Nexus. What a fragrance. Seriously. One of the top ten tobacco fragrances of all time. Seriously. I do. But anyways. I'm, I'm, I'm going elsewhere. He nutted in you. You wanted him to nut in you. That was your plan all along, Brittany. Don't think we don't see the forest for the trees, Brittany. This is your plan all along when you left Cedar, Cedar Springs, Mississippi. This is your plan. Get, live out a certain sexual lifestyle, grab a baller, have a child, Marry him. But at least get a child from a baller. What can I say? She would never get an she would never get an abortion. Having a ball as child, she would never get an abortion. Never, ever, ever, because that throws her money away. That throws all that money away. She's 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 burying the golden egg. Why would she throw away a chance like that? No. Hell no. Divorce is a I mean divorce. Abortion is the last thing on the low mind of these ladies. Oh, now they turn virtuous. Now they turn. Virginal, all of a sudden. They, they turn it now. Now now's the time. Now's the time to do it. You got what you wanted. He nutted in you, as you say.
Thank you very much for saying that, Auntie Jenny. Thank you very much for saying that. If you married him, you'd be all right. Women want, don't want to go that step anymore. They don't want to... <laughs> not in the age of promiscuity. No, they don't want to get married anymore. All they see is the, is, is the filthy lucre, unfortunately. Unfortunately. They'd rather take a man for his funds than live with a man. They see it hard. They, they'd rather bear a son than build a marriage. That's too hard. Again, post-marriage society, right, feminists? It's what you wanted. Equality at all costs. To end, end with tradition. That's what Auntie Jenny was saying. Marry before you carry. Kevin, Godfather said has always said it. Marry before you carry. What are you doing having a child out of wedlock? What are you doing? Clearly we know what Brittany Renner uh, was doing. Cashing in. Kevin was too kind to say it to her face, but I'll say it. She was cashing in. That's why this whole idea of we plan to have a baby together, I don't know about that. I really don't know. Because he hasn't come out and said, oh, we plan to have a baby together. Oh, she's a virtuous woman. Oh, I... We planned a life together and then she popped this baby on me. Before! In older times, if you were going to have a baby with a woman and you came out pregnant... You married the girl before. Before. She got married. You married her. Before she had the child. My mistake. Before she had the child, you married her. Quick. That's what shotgun weddings are. But in this day and age, she'd rather just take your money than take you. My dear gentlemen. That's why you have to be careful. These be careful. I'm, I'm dead serious. They'd much rather have the child than have you. It's another topic. Jesus, just coming out with these things. Just coming out with these things left and right. How women would much ha would much rather have the child. Then have you. Have a marriage, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's, that's a whole other topic right there. I got three topics in this. Let's continue with this. the reason why marriage is in a post modern stage there you go there it is she just explained it she advocates taking advantage of men when things go bad she advocates for it she's just telling you she's telling you that she literally told us if Things go awry, no matter whose fault it is, let it be a woman or a man, a woman has a right to take advantage of a man's fortune. What man wants to decide on that? Usually, it's the, and usually, it's, it, it, 
remember, 80% of divorces are launched by women, you know. 80%. 8 zero percent of divorces are launched by women. 8 zero. Because they know there's an economic incentive for divorce. Especially in the developed world. 80%. Because they know they'll get the house, they know they'll get the car, they know they'll, and they know they'll have the child. Because it's all rigged in their favor. Don't see a lot of feminists running up to courthouses saying that they should plead for equality with men in these stages. Because they know they have the advantage and they want to keep it. They want to keep it. You need to realize that. Absolutely realize that. So here is my man Andrew. He knows the rules. Is it? You think I'm, I'm dealing with these trifling ladies? You think I want to deal with any of them? Hell no. It's a bad deal on all fronts. Why would I want to deal with any woman like these three? Unfortunately, auntie's too old, so, you know, there's a beauty standard there. But uh, the, these other three, hell no. Not with their attitudes. Not with their ideals because their ideals because they're feminists to the core. That's why Andrew acts like the coolest kid in school. Hang back, say nothing, let the ladies bicker over your attention.
Sorry, sorry, Andrew. Just before we get into that whole status argument, and that was probably the last point of tonight, where we're going to have to cut things short and carry this on tomorrow. Uh, we'll be the part two, and then part three will be Friday. Uh, yes, the day before New Year's, New Year's Eve. Uh, well, he's right. Andrew is right in the fact that society in a whole has made it, has made it so that Marriage is marriage is a disincentive to men. Society as a whole, the courts, uh, feminism, uh, all all these different uh, activities, uh, you know, modern women. Period, have made it so that men don't want to get into marriage because, again, they see the, the, the women. Uh, modern women see men as suckers, and if they can take advantage of them, they they will. However, if a woman uh, can convince a man that his life is made better with her, and he can, and so much so that he can't live without her, and she at, and and she makes it up abundantly clear that she wants to be married to him, then he'll take the plunge. He will do that because his life is made better with her being there than without her. So that's a way to you know debunk the whole marriage argument and to and and to stop the whole post marriage ideal and post marriage age, but. The, 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 the facts are still true in the fact that, yes, a woman has to fight in order to, you know, as, as Brittany was saying, has to fight in order to uh, obtain, uh, you know, not only child support, but alimony. And she has to be in the courts daily in order to do that. But if you're a good wife, you wouldn't need to fight for anything. Even if you guys, as, 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 as Andrew pointed out earlier. If a man sees that you were, I mean, I mean, again, you'd have to be a very, very good woman to say the least, okay? I mean, but if a man sees that you are a good woman to him, chances are he'll take care of you in your old, into your, uh, into your later years. Same thing, perfect example, my mother, my father, divorced, divorced. My dad's still taking care of my mother to this day because she was good to him. She was good to him. She helped him build his business. And he is reaping the spoils of it. To now to a point where he will take care of her. He's taking care of her now. If she has any need or any sort of... I mean, the, the divorce was slightly bitter. But at the end of the day, if she is in need of anything, he's there for her. He's still there for her. To this day, he's there for her. In ways I will not go into today. But he's still there for her to this day. But you have to make it, you have to be such a good woman. I mean, they were married for what? 32 years? If you are of that 30, 32 year status, of course a man will uh, want to take care of you in two later years. But if you're there for about a two, three, four year span, and you can, and, and men can see you a mile away that you were only in it for it for the money, that's when things get really contentious. That's when you get into a Brittany Renner scenario whereby you are paying $50,000 in order to fight this in court. Because things get contentious because things were on level ground because you didn't insist on marriage before you had a baby. Simple as that. Because you never had the tools to. Simple as that. Never did. Didn't know how to be a wife, Brittany. And your reputation was sullied by the time you wanted to be a wife. There it is.
<laughs> the body language on this woman is so telling because he's literally cutting right to the quick of Brittany Renner's relationship. She's now realizing in full view, perpetuity, in real time, why her relationship with PJ Washington broke up. And it's simply because reading the whole facts, getting all this material from friends and from the internet, he realized, wait a minute, I'm marrying a hoe here. Yeah, I'm marrying a hoe. Yeah, 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 I'm marrying a hoe. Okay. No man wants to marry a hoe, ladies. A known hoe? No man wants to. None. None, none, none. Be you feminist, be you anything. You can be Mother Teresa herself. And for the most part, don't want to marry women who are promiscuous slash ladies of the evening slash good time girls slash a bit of fun. No man wants to marry that. No man wants to take that plunge. And Brittany is finally realizing because he realizes that he made her realize that PJ in marrying Brittany is marrying her. That would lower his status amongst his peers. His peers. Now, of course, men have married IG models before, but at the end of the day, they didn't exactly write about their sexual exploits, did they? As she did. So PJ did the math, did the mental math. He said, you know what? Now, nah, just pay the child support. Thanks. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And she's seeing that finally. And it's sinking in. And all of her worst fears have come to light. Thanks to Andrew Tate. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. What a shame. There it is. There it is. She hates to admit it, but that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the reason why she's not in a relationship with PJ. If she kept it on the low, she would have had P P she would be married to PJ Washington right now. They would have kids. She would ne not be nowhere near this, but she craved notoriety. She craved status. She craved the limelight to a point where she put all of her stuff on display, thinking that that would give her the status and the man that she wanted. No such luck. Let's just finish up. That's a lie, Andrew. You know it. You did the research on this girl and you knew what she was about. That's why she's mentioning her life in full time. He knew it. That's why all these different scenarios that relate to Brittany Renner are playing out to her. Because he already did the research on her. He already did the background check on her. He knew exactly what, uh, what type of woman she was. Exactly. That's why all of these home truths are hitting close to home all the time. Because she knows, because he knows about her hoish ways. Knows her background. So now it's hitting home. Now it's hitting hard. Just saying.
There it is. There it is. Bam. He j and the Tate is something else, mate. Bravo, sir. Bravo. He basically told her life story how indeed she could have made out a winner and how her life now will play out going forward. You gotta call him Top G for that. You gotta call, you gotta, you gotta. If you can diagnose a woman's life and she has to sit there and take it with no argument, with no recourse, with no retort. It's a top man. Sorry, it is. He's literally told her, because you ran off at the mouth when you had this baby and we we're having our issues, screw you. Fight it out in court. Screw you, fight it out in court. If you had had just played it cool, backed your man, said that they that, that he was going through some stuff, realized that, and that we we're going through issues, but we're gonna work it out. He's a good man, he's this and this and that, and back your man, keeping his status in society, guess what? You wouldn't be in court right now, uh, Brittany. You would not be in court. He'd be paying his child support or he'd be still in a relationship with you on the route to marriage. But you had to run off at the mouth. You had to sit in your car and you had to, sh and you had to spew off at the mouth all these damn diatribes without seeing sense. That's why... Women have a problem because they act out on emotion. Simple emotion. And it gets them into trouble, as it did here. Now she has to pay $50,000 in child support. I mean, in, in, in court costs. Court fees. Lawyer fees. Because she couldn't keep her good mouth shut and support her man. She couldn't do it. Maybe she didn't have the tools to do it. But that's where... A man like Kevin Samuels always said, go get your therapy. She probably didn't get her therapy. Because that would have kept her mouth shut. Absolutely shut. And now she's at a case where she's mouthing off of the mouth of him. How the hell with her? Then she's going on all the, uh, as, as he said, she she could be going on all these on these all these different trips, bad mouthing him to the public. He gets back to him. Who wants to support her? Fight it out in court. Fight it out. Fight it out. Because no man wants their their status lowered, and that's exactly what Brittany Renner did. That's exactly what feminists do. That's feminists speak to a, to a traditional woman wouldn't do that. Wouldn't. But here we are. If you had just acted cool, you everything would have been sorted out. But you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. Now he doesn't want to support you. Now he doesn't want to be anywhere near you. He'd rather fight it out in court than deal with you. And that's a lesson for you ladies. you got to start treating men with a certain degree of respect. No matter what level they are on the, in terms of looks. Because sooner or later, you're going to need one of them. You will need them at whatever level they are. And guess what? Even these higher level men, eh, you'll be lucky if you get on uh, uh, in, 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 into a room with them. A sexual room at that. And guess what? They'll treat you as they wish, as you wish to be treated. For a time, and then it ends. Then you end up like Britney. Instead of being around a man 
who would do anything to keep you happy. But you don't want that. Especially in this Instagram, TikTok age, right? Here's your champion, ladies. Let's get a picture over here. That's your champion. There she is. That is the woman to whom you wish to aspire. Good luck with that. Because if she had to do it all over again, she'd do a whole lot different, I guarantee you. But she'll try to cloud it in the, in, in the guise of, oh, it's my truth. I never want to change a thing and this and this and that and try to sell her story because that's all she has now. All she can do is sell her story. As did Amber Rose and as did Kareem Stephens. But look what happened to them. Black women in and of itself. It's the same. Anywho, we're going to leave it there because tonight we went long. We went into at least nearly four hours of content. Talking about one segment, how, how Andrew Tate took feminism and womanism and, and, uh, and womanism to school. Tomorrow night, we're going to continue the show. Actually, we're going we're gonna to go into part two of this. There's a few issues I want to clear up here. One of them is very, <laughs> is, uh, is, 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 a bit, is a bit long. So we're going to get into that. And how uh, we're going to go to part two of how Andrew Tate took feminism to school as part of the Andrew Tate, Jeff Pearly Things, Brittany Renner show that happened on Christmas Day. It was a fantastic show. It's over a million views now. If you haven't checked it out, please check it out. Please support the channel of Jeff Pearly Things. She's doing wonderful, wonderful things in the, in the manosphere into the red pill. She's doing wonderful things. And she's calling out women on their crap. Now, a lot of women don't want to see that, but if you want to be, she's getting into a man's mind. If you want to be, if you want to get the inside track of what a man really wants out of a woman, listen to her. She's doing her thing. She's got a wife school. She's got everything. Credit to Ms. Just Pearly Things on her efforts and this show. It was fantastic. But we're going to continue with it tomorrow night on Talk Talk Live, live on, uh, on IG and YouTube. Part two on how Andrew Tate took feminism to school will happen tomorrow night, 8 p.m., Thank you for joining me tonight on Talk Talk Live. I've gone for at least three and a quarter hours, but it, it's just flown by. It's literally flown by. Got a lot of content for you. A lot of this stuff is gonna, we're gonna start pushing things out towards TikTok and YouTube. A lot of shorts are going out starting, I would I would hopefully say next week into the new year. We're gonna be starting pushing out a lot more shorts. We're gonna really start pushing out the message. That is the plan. And you're gonna start seeing a lot more things from this tiny little studio here. A lot more changes are going to be made and uh, looking forward to your company. So look forward to seeing you then, guys. This is a fantastic show on how Andrew Tate took feminists to school. I don't know why they cancel him. Oh, I know why they cancel him because he's advocating a, men, a, a message of men being men. And the powers that be don't want to hear that. Just like Anyways, we're going to continue the conversation tomorrow night on Talk Talk Live on IG and YouTube, 8 p.m. Do join me, and we'll continue this. We have a few more things to break down. And then part three, we'll talk about how Andrew Tate took modern women to school. Re-relationships. Oh, yeah. This is a part three. This is a part three. We got a few things. We got a few other topics we're going to discuss then. So we're going to end it here on Talk Talk Live. Thank you for joining me on Talk Talk Live. Like, subscribe, comment on the road to a thousand subscribers and sponsored by Duntalk, D-U-N-T-A-L-K dot com. D-U-N-T-A-L-K dot com. Fall, winter line out now. We'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. right here, back here. Thank you for joining me and we'll speak to you soon. Peace. And if you talk, talk, walk, walk. Yes, that's right. See you tomorrow. Bye.